So many men will get you into their sport and then ditch you as soon as you get better at it than them. Thank you for this. This is this happens all the time. This is one of my mutuals. I'm sure you're already following. This is yet another example of why insecure men suck. At the very least, they will just be awful partners because they can't get over their insecurities and they feel so threatened by you. And so they will do everything to either sabotage whatever it is that you're doing that you're better at than them or diminish what you're doing or compete with you in this really messed up way or just ditch you like the whole peddler's talking about. Being like, oh, you know, I'm just gonna go climb with someone else that'll make me feel better. They don't wanna be alone. They don't wanna do what you do. It, so few men will ever take up a hobby of their girlfriends. Like how often does that happen, right? Unless they are very secure in themselves and truly confident, not cocky, which covers for insecurity. Most men expect you to start going to the, the support the sports team that they love. For you to start climbing and being their ballet merch, which is literally what they call women. I'm, I'm a climber, I've been in the world for over 20 years. That's literally a thing. Guy dates a girl, she's not a climber, that's cool. He'll teach her to climb so she can belay him, but he will only go out climbing with her if he has no one better to climb with, or unless he wants to lead every single climb. Because in that case, she's just there to keep him alive, which again, is such a perfect metaphor. <laughs> Nothing about her, her feeling good, her accomplishing something, her building inner strength and confidence and all those important things. No, it's just to serve him and keep him alive, literally with her break hand and feed him rope the way we just feed men so much stuff so that they can shine in their glory and win the prize or, you know, label that new climb that they were the first one to do or run at that marathon so you can wait at the end all day just to be like, yay. And that is why these small, it's not tests. It's more like just paying attention to these dudes and their attitudes around you being better at things. Are they, do they show the, the slightest bit of insecurity when you are funnier, funnier than them, smarter than them, better at chess, better at literally anything? Because if that is a problem right away and they don't have to be like, oh, you're so, like literally if they try to bring you down a notch or act, you know, just weird when you win instead of being like, wow, great job. Or if you find yourself making yourself small because you're afraid what will happen to their ego if you win? All of those are red flags. If they assume that they're the leader and you're the follower, red flag. But if they expect you to lead literally everything, also red flag. I don't wanna be your sidecar to this adventure of your life. I also don't wanna be your mom who drags you around in my life. I want us to stand on equal ground, benefit each other's lives, encourage each other, be literal teammates. That's the point, team mates. Playing on the same team, we each have our own strengths, I'm better at this, he's better at that. But we encourage each other and each person is just as important on that team. And so many men cannot wrap their head around this because every time they deal with women, it's about dominating them and being better than them because they secretly are afraid that we're better than them. I mean, we're the ones who are literally keeping the human race going, right? Without, without uteruses, life would end. They know if they look at any farm, it's a bunch of like, heifers and one bull. You know, my mom had a farm at one point and big boy, just one of him and a whole field of heifers, which my mom named one of them after me, which I find is weird, and my sister. <laughs> Shannon's pregnant. I was like, what? No, 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 the heifer. Anyway, any man that wants you to dim your light or wants credit whenever your light is shining, red flag. That breadcrumb guy that I told, I'm gonna tell the whole story soon. Breadcrumb guy, Literally, after I had my most important moment of my career, when this sucker went viral, literally turned my life, blew up my life in a good way. After years of trying to sell books, I had literary agents asking me that they can represent me. I had people asking me to write a book about that, which I didn't want to. I'd already written a whole article. I'm not giving men any more of my time. I want to write about my life. Like, Stuff just took off after so much work. And breadcrumb guy, the biggest loser who did nothing but feed my daddy issues, my insecurities, and making me feel crazy and literally wasted nothing but my time. When that article came out, do you know this man had the audacity to go, oh, wow, is that because of me? Excuse me? Yeah, well, like, you know, we're together and this is like the biggest moment of your career. I'm like, excuse me, I wrote that before I met you. And if anything, you've done nothing but distract me. I probably would have had several viral articles if I wasn't, you know, didn't say this part. 
looking at my phone 1,562 times a day to see if he texted me back in a timely manner. You know, like this dude did nothing but hold my career back. Luckily, I was publishing stuff, but only because I only saw him once a week. If I had literally fallen for him, that would have stalled my career for who knows how long. But he could not imagine something amazing happening to me without it somehow being about him, but only in a good way. And then right after that, I did a one woman show, which he came to. And then the next day at breakfast, there was one chair in the sun and one in the shade, and it was a cold day. And he goes, I think I'll sit in the sun today. It's about time I be in the spotlight and you be in the shadow. What? A man that cannot be truly happy and supportive and full of nothing but joy and being so proud of you, not in a like patronizing way, but in a like, wow, you work so hard. You deserve this kind of way. I'm so happy that I'm in your life and supporting you and, and, and sharing this moment of joy with you kind of way. Get out of them. They will do nothing but tear you down, whether it's with your career, with your passions, your hobbies, literally anything. Insecure men cannot stand. When a person that patriarchy has taught them is less than them, does better than them, or even equal to them. They cannot stand it. And if that dynamic exists at all in your relationship, it will ruin it. And some of the biggest offenders of this are the progressive guys, the nice guys, the liberals, because those guys can't even admit to themselves that they think just like their daddies or granddaddies who grew up in a different time where women weren't competing with them so much. Insecure men do not want you to succeed at literally anything unless it's to exploit you and become like a hobo schedule and literally just let you do everything. In which case, again, they're making you their mom. They will not pour into you. They will not love you. They will not cheer you on. They want you back in your place, in the sidecar, in the audience, out of the spotlight, because it's supposed to be all about them. And how dare you show them up? Do not let these men in your life. They are unbelievably dangerous. If not to your physical life, to your nervous system, and to your soul. They will kill your confidence. Don't let them. Cut them off.